Good afternoon, friends, family, brothers and sisters. This is Pastor Shane Bryan speaking, and um, I just want to share a few thoughts with you regarding something that's been very pervasive and pre prevalent within um, the LGBTQ movement and its infiltration into the churches as well. And many churches um, who used to be Protestant churches are now inviting and adapting their the church doctrines and even the rewriting the Bible to accommodate the LGBTQ movement um, in so many ways. Something that came to mind and it comes, um, I hear this over and over and the way homosexuals um, want Sodom and Gomorrah to be explained which is by the way it, it occurs in Genesis 18 where the angels visit Abraham first telling him that they're going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and of course Abraham begs them even down to five and um, they end up destroying it anyway and I don't want to go through the whole story but we find that in Genesis 19 verse 1 to 29 where the angels actually go even to Sodom and Gomorrah and where we find that the people were, were willing to even rape angels and um, it's often said by the LGBTQ movement and even pastors these days with these big banners across their churches, Jesus loves everyone, um, trying to adapt or assimilate themselves to the world to attract people, almost making Jesus into this ambi-pamby type of Jesus who just overlooks every single thing. And we know, of course, in churches these days, um, homosexuals, and lesbians are becoming pastors and ministers and bishops and and um, all these things that the Bible condemns. And by the way, it's not just the only thing that the Bible condemns is homosexuality, but seeing that we're on the topic of this homosexual thing, this LGBTQ movement, which even in South Africa has, has really been pervasive and invasive um, throughout our country, um, one often hears the argument coming up, that God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because they were inhospitable. Um, they, 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 hot, they lacked hospitality. And therefore he destroyed the two cities with fire and brimstone out of the sky because they were just not hospitable enough. Maybe they didn't feel like feeding the angels or maybe they were just greedy or something like that. Which is a strange thing, number one, for God to do in any event. Um, to go to such an extent to destroy and completely obliterate off the face of the planet two cities because of their inhospitality um, or lack of hospitality rather. So we've got that argument and, 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 uh, and I know that some people have readapted that part and, and even rewritten that part to say that those people are in, in hospitable. Um, now here's something strange, because either God is a maniac or he's schizophrenic, because we have a similar account and, and found only once within the New Testament, and that is in the book of Luke chapter 9, and the most weirdest thing actually takes place. Um, and I want to read it to you because Jesus is going into Samaria and the Samaritans completely reject him. In fact, to the point that they, they drive him out um, at the threat of his life. And I want to read Luke 9 verse 54 to 55 to you. And I want to also add um, some extended information that you find in some of the manuscripts which don't appear in... Um, other manuscripts but I want you to I want to read it to you to its full extent and I want to show you the the madness with the claim that God destroys because the people of Sodom and Gomorrah weren't hospitable um, um, uh, enough um, here in Luke 9 54 let me read it to you it, it starts off the Samaritans reject Jesus verse 51 as the day of his ascension approached Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. He sent messengers 
on ahead who went into the village of the Samaritans to make arrangements for him. Verse 53 says this, but the people there refused to welcome him. If you look at the, at the tenses over there and what it actually means, in fact, they did not just welcome him, they rejected him outright. It was almost a vitriolic um, thing, this. they hated him because he was heading for Jerusalem. Verse 54 says this, And when the disciples, James and John, um, saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? And then some manuscripts add this, As Elijah did. Remember, Elijah calls down fire from heaven and consumes the, the offering to Baal, and, um, well, at least his offering, and also the offerings to Baal, and has those 70... Um, prophets put put to death. So he says, should the disciples say, should we call down fire from heaven? This is what Jesus says to them. He turns and rebukes them. And then some manuscripts adds, adds this. He says, you do not know what manner of spirit is in you. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy people's lives, but to save them. So now, there's either something desperately wrong with God. He's schizophrenic. Or we need to wipe out the entire Old Testament so that we can live in the New Testament age of the so called age of grace. But let me remind you once again, one third of the New Testament comp is comprised of the Old Testament. So you cannot read the New Testament without seeing the Old Testament. Jesus made most of his quotes from the Old Testament when Jesus faced the, the devil in in, in the desert during his 40 days of temptation. He quoted every single scripture from the book of Deuteronomy. He quoted the Old Testament. So why in the world would God destroy two cities for being inhospitable when Jesus says, God forbid that you come up with this sort of evil spirit within you. That's what it actually means. What manner of spirit is it? It's exactly the same spirit when he rebuked Simon Peter. When he said he's going to the cross. And Simon Peter takes it upon himself to take Jesus aside, rebuke him. And then Jesus tells Simon Peter, get behind me, Satan. Because Simon Peter was being used as the mouthpiece of Satan. Because of course Satan is trying to thwart everything that... Jesus tries to do it. Yeah, Jesus uses James and John as a mouthpiece. And they call down fire from heaven as if they are Elijah's. Once again, one can read deeper into this and think, well, you know what? They still think that Jesus is Elijah. They need more proof. But the basic point I'm trying to make here is our churches are assimilating themselves. They're making themselves more palatable for the, for, for the world. And they're inviting in homosexuals. Are we meant to? Yes, we are. Are they meant to change? 1 Corinthians 6 onwards, I think 15, 11 onwards, goes to speak about all sorts of evils immoral, of immorality, stealing, thieving, conniving, sexual immorality, fornication, homosexuality. But Paul goes to remind the Corinthian, the Corinthian church that such were some of you. You are no longer like that. So did God destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because they would not listen? They even had messengers come to their city, angelic messengers, whom, by the way, they would have recognized, should have fallen and begged for mercy, but instead try and rape them. So God, down, God brings his wrath down as he had promised. So they weren't destroyed for inhospitality, uh, hospitality, for or not being hospitable enough, giving them food, they were destroyed because they were their blatant, immoral acts of homosexuality, and so much so that church history and and and, and biblical history tells us they would have, have mass orgies in the town square, having sex men with men for everyone to see. This is how depraved and immoral those towns were, those cities were. So yeah, in the New Testament, God, Jesus said, God forbid that you even dare call out fire from heaven for people who are inhospitable towards me. What type of spirit is in you? So I want to say outrightly from me, 
Pastor Shane Christopher Bryant from Truthful Life Family Church. You cannot, you can rewrite scripture all the way you want. You can try and make it more palatable, palatable for, for the homosexuals, even turning them into pastors. But again, God's word, and as Proverbs reminds us, and elsewhere all over the Bible, not jot, one jot or tittle, you cannot change God's word for what it is. God destroys because people do not listen. But Jesus came, as he says, to come and have mercy, to save lives. But yet people still do not listen. And we have the nerve of church as churches, the life-saving king who came. We put our banners and says, Jesus loves you. Come as you are and stay as you are. And I'd love to make a little video and go around town and show you different churches with all these banners strong churches from the past who used to teach pure scripture sola scriptura but no longer do why churches are on the decline so we need to win people over we need to assimilate ourselves we need to become seeker friendly churches so as far as the lgbtq movement they have infiltrated the churches exactly like the paul tells us um, the Galatians in the book of Galatians 1 verse 6 that anyone who preaches a gospel contrary to the gospel you we originally preached and received let him be anathema forever accursed on the level of Sodom and Gomorrah let that be a warning to you brothers and sisters I say this in love when people speak the truth, they say it's hate speech. To say homosexual, it's hate speech. No. We speak love. We warn you about the fire to come. If your house caught a light, a fireman would come in there to get you out of the fire. So why do you reject what the Lord's word says, what God's word says? Take heed. Do not harden your hearts. I bless you in the name of Jesus on this wonderful Thursday afternoon. And may his face shine upon you and his countenance lift up your head. Amen.